Earthing and bonding is an important requirement when installing electrical equipment that has prompted requests for clarification of the industry many years ago. I recall attending a seminar on the subject organised by the IET and the opening remarks by the first speaker were earthing and bonding is a topic that continually causes controversy and confusion. Fifteen years as a lecturer and technical officer for a competent person organisation, taking 30 calls a day of which on average six or seven were on this very subject, confirmed this to be true. This short video addresses the basic principles to provide protection from electric shock due to a fault. As you can see, I have stressed the importance of definitions which are listed in part two. A lot of misunderstanding arises from a failure to correctly determine the different functions provided by earthing and by bonding. This slide and the following slide identify the purpose of earthing. The example shown is a simple metal enclosure. Other examples would be metal conduit, trunking or the earth pin of a socket outlet. So why do we earth equipment? If we go to Fundamental Principles Chapter 13 of BS 7671 it tells us that as well as limiting the magnitude of the current passing through the body, the purpose of bonding we also need to limit the duration of the current passing through the body. This simplified view of a low resistance earth path, ZS, will result in a high fault current to disconnect the protective device in the prescribed time. For example, 0.4 of a second. As always, if you found this helpful, Please subscribe, click the thumbs up icon and leave any feedback in the comments section. Many thanks.